YouTube, man. What's up, man? This is your guy, Manny, and this is the Talking Sports with Manny YouTube channel. So today, man, we're going to rank the Washington football skill position. Now, this has been something that we've not been able to do in the past few years, but this year we're definitely, definitely talented, and we have enough to go ahead and do a ranking. Now, I could have done a top 10, but I said, why do a top 10? when I can just kind of narrow it down and really get the guys that I really want to get into this video. So we're going to start off with number seven. We're going to start from seven and work our way up. So the top seven uh, skill players or the, the top seven playmakers for the football team on the offensive side of the ball. I'll do a defensive video another time, but this video is going to focus on the top seven playmakers on offense. So starting at number seven, we have Cam Sims. Cam Sims stepped up last year. He played very, very well, but I think that he can be very useful this year with a guy like uh, Fitzpatrick. Now, I'm going to look up the stats. I'm going to kind of give you what he did last year, and then we'll kind of go from there. So last year, he had 477 yards. Um, he had 32 receptions, and he had one touchdown. Now, this season, with a guy like Fitzpatrick, I really feel like he can definitely, definitely step up and play even better than he did last season. Now, does he get more than 477 yards? I think he has the potential to. Even though we have all these different playmakers, I honestly do because at the end of the day, the way that our office is going to be structured this year, some of the lesser guys are going to be open. So my question for you guys is, can 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 can, can Cam Sims get more than 477 yards? Um, this is tough. I'll say that he – I will definitely say that Cam Sims gets at least 400 yards. So I have enough for 400 yards at least. Um, can he get more? He possibly can, you know, uh, barring injury, hoping, hoping that everybody is healthy. Now, number six on my list is going to be J.D. McKissick. J.D. McKissick had an amazing year last year. His numbers were bananas. You know, he was the second most uh, – um, he had the second most receptions out of every running back in the NFL. Number one was Alvin Kamara, and number two was J.D. McKissick. Now, obviously, J.D. McKissick had a lot of checkdowns. Alex Smith loves to check down, and Alex Smith was best friends with J.D. McKissick. I remember a few games where J.D. McKissick had more targets and more receptions than anybody on the team. So J.D. McKissick, I don't think he gets a lot of receptions like he did last year. But he's still going to be an effective um, back for us. I think he's going to play more so to that third down role. Okay. So can't really predict his stats. But what I will say is that he definitely has a chance to have 250 yards receiving and then 250 yards rushing. Okay. And then I'll probably give him at least 45 receptions. Do you guys agree with that statement? Let me know in the comment section. We're going to go on to our next guy, which is the Yami Brown. This guy from North Carolina, one of my favorite prospects in the draft. I had to put him here. I think he's a top five um, weapon for this football team. He's a, he's a top five playmaker for this team, and he has not even played it down yet. But that's just how much I believe in Dayami Brown. Dayami Brown has a chance to become a starter towards the middle to end of the season. I don't think he starts out the year as a starter. And the guy that probably starts ahead of him, I didn't want to put him on this top seven because I don't think uh, a Adam Humphreys, so to speak, you know, is in the top seven. I just don't think he's in the top seven. So Dayami Brown definitely has a chance to be on the outside opposite Terry and then Curtis Samuel in the slot. So Dayami Brown can't really predict the stats, but I would say that he definitely has a shot for at least 600 receiving yards, okay? You guys agree with that statement? Do you guys think that Dayami Brown gets more than 600 yards or less than 600 yards? Let me know in the comment section. Coming in at number four, Logan Thomas, the guy who played outstanding last year. He had a chance to almost crack 700 yards receiving. Had a lot of receptions. Um, had some touchdowns. Had some good flashes here and there, but... I think that Logan Thomas has a chance this season to score seven touchdowns. So that's kind of my little, not bold prediction, but my little prediction there is um, I think that he's going to be targeted a lot in the red zone. Therefore, I'm predicting 
seven touchdowns for Logan Thomas. Do you guys believe that Logan Thomas scores seven, more than seven touchdowns, right about seven, or less than seven? Let me know in the comment section, but I definitely have Logan Thomas in as number four. I'm not going to predict his yards because I really don't know, um, but I don't think he gets as many yards as he did last season. So uh, who knows? Maybe he's like around that 500 plus yards uh, range. Now, the next guy on my list coming in at number three is Curtis Samuel. This guy is going to be a Swiss Army knife, and I definitely think that Curtis Samuel has a chance to have at least 800 yards receiving, somewhere around that range in the 800s. Then I see him rushing for, let's say, about 200 yards. So total, I have him over 1,000 yards from scrimmage total but it's going to be a combination of receiving and rushing. So he's going to take away a little bit from J.D. McKissick's role, which is kind of why I was reluctant to give J.D. McKissick 500 total, but I can definitely see him getting 500 total just because he's going to be getting a lot of those dump-off passes, and they want to utilize Curtis Samuel everywhere. He's not going to be in a, in a specific role. He'll have some jet sweeps. He'll have some, some screens. He'll, he'll have some screens that are thrown backwards that would be considered a, a rushing attempt. So I definitely see a lot of those, some jet sweeps, um, see him going, you know, in the slot, a lot of crow routes, some slants and fades. And he's going to go deep this season because of Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's definitely going to go deep. And um, speaking of Ryan Fitzpatrick, I didn't put him on this list because this was more so the skill players. So I didn't include quarterbacks or quarterback, a quarterback at all. So coming in at number two, Antonio Gibson. Antonio Gibson can have some crazy, crazy usage this year. And I'm expecting big things out of out of Antonio Gibson. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, he has at least 1,000 yards rushing, especially with that 17th game. You're definitely going to get a chance to, to, you know, rush for 1,000 yards. Um, last year he only had 117 carries. I mean, 170 carries. And he did pretty good because he had just right under 800 yards rushing at 795. He had 11 rushing touchdowns. He uh, caught 36 passes for another 247 yards receiving. Now, my question for you guys is, I think that Antonio Gibson rushes for about 11 or 1,200 yards. I honestly think that he does that. Now, in the touchdowns, that's the main question. Does he get double-digit rushing touchdowns again? I say that he gets 13 touchdowns. So I'm going to put 13 touchdowns down on my notes. And you guys hold me to this as the season goes on, midway through the season, after the season. Call me out on this video. I think that Antonio Gibson gets about 13 rushing touchdowns, and then he's about around 1,100 yards to 1,200 yards. I'm going to write that down. And then they have him at 36 receptions last year. I definitely think he's up in that range of close to 50. I'm going to put him at 48 receptions. And I'm not going to guess the yards, but it's going to be over 200 yards. That's for sure. That's for sure. So let's just say 250. Let's just say 250 being nice. So if he does this, I mean, that that's awesome. That's almost, you know, definitely has potential of 14 to 1,500 yards from scrimmage. But I just think that Antonio Gibson is that dude. And even with injury, I think that he's going to have a game or two that he over exceeds uh, what he normally does. Now, let's go ahead and look at his game log real quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up his game log, and I'm going to see how many times he ran for more than 100 yards. It was only two times. He had 128 yards versus Dallas. Then he had 115 yards versus Dallas. So versus Dallas, he has over 200 yards, over 40 carries, and four touchdowns. I mean, I guess he really loves playing against Dallas, man. I love it. And he also has nine receptions for another 40-plus yards versus Dallas. So that means this year when he plays Dallas, he has that potential to go off like crazy. So I'm expecting more consistency out of the running game with the improved uh, line that we have. I definitely see Antonio Gibson um, having a huge, huge year. And for those who play fantasy football, he's definitely a target that you want to go ahead and grab, whether it's Dynasty or Redraft. Now, coming in at number one is my main man, Terry McLaurin. I've said that I have him at 1,400 yards, and I'm not going to shy away from that. I'm not going to shy away from that. I have him at least at 90 receptions. I've said 94 before. I've said, I've said 95, so around that range. But 90 receptions 
1,400 yards, and I have Terry at seven touchdowns. Let me know. Do you guys believe that Terry has 1,400, less than 1,400, or more than 1,400? Uh, do you guys see 90 receptions? Do you guys think I'm crazy when I say 90 receptions? But let's go ahead and look at what Terry McLaurin did last year, then I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. So last year, Terry McLaurin, man, everybody knew where the ball was going. You know, he had 134 targets last year. I am expecting 150 targets. So if he had 87 receptions last year, 90 receptions is nothing, man. You know what? I'm, I'm going to renege on my 90, and I'm going to go back to my 94. I'm going to go back to my 94. I think that Terry has 94 receptions. Matter of fact, Terry has a chance to get 100 receptions this year, but I'm not going to go that far. I'm going to say he's going to get 50 to 150 targets, and he's definitely going to get at least – at least 94 receptions. Um, he's going to get, if he gets 94 receptions, he definitely can get um, 1,400 yards, four touchdowns. I'm going to pull out the calculator real quick, and I'm going to do some math. So last year he had 118 uh, recept I mean yards total, and I believe he played, how many games did he play last year? I want to say he played 15 games. Let me see. He played four. Okay, he played fifteen games. So one hundred and eighteen receptions. No, sorry, one hundred and eight. Uh, what am I doing? Sorry. Eleven, eleven, eighteen. So eleven, eighteen is how many yards Terry McLaurin had, and if we divide that by fifteen games, you know we had seventy-four yards per per game, almost seventy-five yards. So let's just say this season that Terry gets. 85 yards per game and he's all and he's healthy all 17 games that's 14 for that's 14 45 if terry can just give me 85 receptions a game per i mean 85 yards per game on average he can definitely hit that number let's see what happens if he does 80 yards per game for 17 games that's 1360 so um I'm not saying that I'm not saying that that it's an easy thing, but what I'm saying is that with the targets, if he's if he's getting 150 targets, and if he goes over a th uh, 100 receptions, he's definitely going to shot at 1400 yards. It's definitely doable. It's definitely doable. I think he's going to be one of the best wide receivers this year in the NFL. So, watch the Football Nation, man. Let me know what you guys think. Of in the comment section, please share this video. Please like. Please subscribe. And if you like content like this. Subscribe because I'm going to have more Washington stuff coming up as training camp is going to be approaching next week. So you guys stick with me, man. I got more videos coming up. I'll be dropping a defensive uh, playmaker video. And um, for those that are mad that I didn't include Ryan Fitzpatrick, I'm sorry. This is your guy, Manny, and I will catch you guys on the next video. And I'm out. Peace.